So hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for investing your time uh, with us today. So my name is Rafael. I work as a sales engineer with low voltage uh, drives and control sales team based here in Brazil. And today I would like to introduce you to the webinar presenter, Mrs. Janaina Schumel. Janaina has an extensive experience working with WEG automation, and she will talk about the characteristics of the motor control methods using variable speed drives. Right. So in this presentation, you will then get to know on a quite important subject to set your inverter to the application itself. And that means taking more of the setup motor plus inverter. All right. So moving on, let's touch base on a few housekeeping points uh, for this event today. So to ensure a good sound quality, uh, all the microphones will be in mute. And if you have any questions, uh, we love to, to hear from you. So feel free to type those questions into the questions and answer chat you can find in this webinar structure. And our team will uh, reply to your questions accordingly during the presentation and uh, as it goes, right? So guys, in cases you miss any important point, don't you worry, okay? A recorded version of this webinar will be made available uh, to you. So you can watch it again later or you can share with your contacts or colleagues, right? To do so, you just need to access the uh, WEX uh, LinkedIn page and click on events. There you will find this webinar, past webinars and also future ones from all the WEG divisions. Um, also, you can, I uh, highly encourage you guys to, to follow us on the uh, social media, on LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, so you can receive the latest news about WEG, about our products and all the different solutions we have for you. OK, so again, uh, welcome. And now uh, I think now it's time to pass it over to Janaina. I hope you guys have a great time. Enjoy it. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Rafael, for introduction. And hello, everyone. I am Janaina. I hope everyone is well. And as Rafael already said, today we will talk and learn a little more about uh, motor control methods using variable speed drive, uh, the main characteristics and the best method for each application. Remember again, you can send your question and our team will answer them, OK? Uh, well, information is given. Let's know the main topics of today's webinar. Um, to start the webinar, let's remember quickly some basic information about VSG in general and how they work. And then we start talking about control methods, uh, starting with the scalar control uh, and its main characteristics. And then we talk about vector control, both sensorless and with encoder. In the next, we talk about VVW, Voltage Vector WEG, the control method developed by WEG. And today, we will also comment about the vector control method for permanent magnet motors. And finally, we will learn how to choose the best method for your application. Uh, thank you in consideration the performance of each, uh, each method. Uh, well, now that we have seen the topics uh, that will be presented today, let's start the presentation. The two most important equa uh, equations when talking about a motor are probably those of speed and the torque. Let's talk about this in more detail. The speed equation is defined by 120 times the frequency of the motor uh, divided by the number of poles uh, of the motor and the result multiplied by 1 minus the slip. The number of poles and slip are constructive characteristics of the motor. In other words, they cannot be changed. So if you, we want to change uh, the speed of a motor, we can do it by changing the frequency. Uh, and now, for the work, the equation is defined by a constant key, uh, Ke multiplied by the magnet flux and multiplied by rotor current. 
And the magnet flux is the result of a division between the voltage and the frequency multiplied by another constant uh, that we call uh, K1. Some other features that uh, are extremely important when it comes to the motor. Did you know that the motor spends its purchase price in energy in only 45 days of operation? That's why the market is increasingly looking for more efficient motors or more efficient ways to use or operate uh, in motor. Uh, with this goal in mind, it's important to talk about variable frequency drive, also known as VSD, variable speed drive, among other common, uh, common names. Basically, a VSD is equipment responsible for controlling motors in a precise and economical way. But then how does a frequency inverter work? Uh, the construction of a typical six post low voltage drive can be divided into three main sections, the input diode rectifier bridge, the DC link and the inverter unit. And so the first, the AC input voltage passes by rectifier, uh, which is composed of six diodes. And at, uh, at this point, we, we have the rectified voltage. However, as you can see, the DC voltage has ripples, uh, so DC link caps start help to smooth out the ripple, and as a consequence, a DC voltage is available to the inverter stage, uh, which is composed of six AG, uh, IGBTs, uh, which stands for Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. We'll convert in DC voltage to NC voltage using the PWM technique, which is pulse widget modulation. The IGBTs uh, switch in such a way that this voltage pulse can be controlled and as a consequence, a variable voltage and the frequency can be generated at, uh, at out output. In the end, this is the signal that the motor will see at its terminal. Um, and here we have examples of a waveform of frequency behavior varying the widget of the PWM pulse. A large pulse result in a wider waveform, in other words, a reduced frequency, while shorter pulse, a pulse result in smaller waveform and result in a higher frequency. But uh, why it's interesting to use the motor together with a variable e speed drive? Um, well, there are a few informations that are important to take in consideration. For example, did you know that 40% of the electric energy cons uh, consumed in the world goes to electric motors? Uh, and the industrial plant, approximately 67% of the energy consumption is due to the electric motors alone. Uh, during entire life on a motor, the acquisition value of this equipment is approximately only 2.5% of all the expenses you, uh, you will have, and 96% of which will be from the electric power consumption of this motor. Um, compared to other methods, the cost of purchasing a VSD is higher. Uh, but after learning all this important information, it's easy to understand that this method is also the option with the better possibility of economy and efficiency. Uh, if you want to learn more about energy efficiency, uh, WEG has a webinar dedicated to, to this subject that can be uh, assessed by the link described here or directly on WEG's YouTube channel. Okay? And so let's talk about the main topic of this webinar, motor control methods using variable speed drive. Uh, so let's start with the scalar control method, uh, which was the first control method developed by industry and is the simplest of the methods. Uh, basically, it's defined as a function of two variables, voltage and frequency. It controls only the speed variation and the torque remains constant. In other words, it's not possible to control the level of torque that will be sent to the motor. 
So, uh, when drive trains frequency, it's also chance output voltage to keep the ratio constant. Uh, the main advantage of this method is that it's easy to implement and they need least adjustment. And uh, sorry, adjustments. Uh, as you can see from the table below, only a few parameters are required. And the startup is fast and simple, and it comes with the factor default setting. So in general, uh, in general, it needs little or no modification. It's also uh, suitable in multimodal application. However, uh, the scalar control has low dynamic performance with low speed resolution and low torque response. And then later on, uh, we'll talk more about the performance of this method and the, the others. But what happens when the frequency values are higher than, nominals, uh, than, than motor's nominal value? Uh, well, in these situations, the VF rate is kept uh, uh, is kept constant up to the limit of the nominal voltage of the motor. In the case of this graph, up to uh, 214 volts. After this, after this point, which is named inflection point, this VF rating chance. Uh, in other words, it becomes no longer constant. Uh, from this point on, the motor uh, begins the, uh, to operate in another region. And the name of this operation, uh, operation region is future weakening region, because in this mode there is a linear decrease in the torque, and thus it's possible to increase the speed of the motor above the nominal, decreasing the torque. Uh, well, now that we know the first method developed by the industry, let's talk about uh, its uh, successor, the vector control. Uh, this control was developed from the need to improve the performance of devices, uh, but it's more complex than the scalar control, but it has some other, other advantages. However, unlike the scalar control, uh, the vector control does not have a linear relationship between voltage and the frequency, because it can separate the control level from the motor currents. In other words, it separates uh, the motor current in two components. Uh, the direct current IG, which is related to the electromagnetic flux in the motor, and the quadratic uh, current uh, IK that is directly related to electrical magnetic torque uh, produced on the motor shaft. Uh, this method can understand what the motor needs at the moment of its operation. For example, uh, if it needs to increase the flux or if it needs to increase torque more, and consequently the motor can have a much faster uh, torque response. Uh, that's why this method becomes more efficient. And so, with this ability to understand uh, what the motor needs at the moment, this method is a advantage. Uh, advantages is uh, in that it has higher dynamic performance, with quick torque response and the more precise speed control. Um, with uh, vector control, there are two divisions, and the first is sensorless vector control. Uh, the sensorless vector control is an open loop control, uh, so it does not have a sensor. Uh, it works as an open loop circuit, unlike the control with a sensor that, that works with a closed loop circuit, um, as it does not have a sensor of the motor shaft. It simply makes some, uh, some probability calculations and it defines the most, uh, the most probable position of the motor shaft. In this way, it can control the magnet design current, the torque current. Uh, and it has an advantage compared to, uh, compared to scalar control uh, because it works with the magnitude and the angle between the voltage and the current, uh, while scalar control works uh, only with the magnitude. The sensorless vector control has high starting torque and the fast dynamic response. Another advantage of this type of control is its robustness against sudden variations in supply network voltage and the load, avoiding unnecessary shutdowns by overcurrent. 
Uh, however, it presents limitations when there is the need to operate at low frequencies, uh, close to zero. Uh, the, sec the second division of vector control uh, is the vector control with encoder, and it has the same advantages uh, as sensorized vector control, but has additional benefits of torque and speed control. The method with sensor uh, with encoder is more precise. It's, pre it's precise in all speed ranges, uh, even at zero RPM. So it's ideal for applications that require a high dynamic performance, fast response, and high resolution precision. Uh, and now we get to the VVW vector voltage WEC, the vector control method developed by WEC. And basic, basically, it's an intermediate control method between a scalar and a sensorized vector. The, VV, uh, the VVW control uses the stator current uh, measurement, the stator resistance, and the motor name plate data to automatically estimate output voltage and slip compensation. Uh, replacing the VF sleep compensation function. The main advantage in relation to VF control is the better speed regulation with higher torque capacity uh, at low speeds, frequencies below 5 Hz, allowing in significant improvement in the drive performance on a permanent basis. This control method is simpler and easier to adjust. Uh, and now, uh, let's talk about the PM control method for permanent mag magnet motors. But before talking about the method itself, it's important to briefly understand what, uh, what uh, a permanent mag magnet motor is. Uh, basically, permanent magnet motors are AC motors with a three-phase stator winding, similar to an induction motor with a permanent magnet rotor. And the main features of the W magnet motor line is it has greater protection of the magnets against centrifugal force and the higher efficiency than the induction motor because it has less loss in the water, which guarantees a lower temperature rise, a rise a smaller volume and weight. Uh, and in compared to an equivalent induction motor, the volume of, uh, of the W magnet motor is up to 40, serving percent smaller, resulting in a high torque to uh, volume ratio and a 36 percent reduction in weight. For the same torque to power ratio, by decreasing the size of the hosing, the ventilation system is also reduced. Uh, w magnet motors can be used where speed variation with constant torque and high efficiency why, uh, are required. Um, the vector control developed to drive the motors in the W magnet line has a structure very similar to that used for induction motors. For example, in the constant torque region, the control determ uh, determines the appropriate IG current reference for the specified motor. Uh, in this way, the reluctance torque is added to the torque produced by the magnets in the motor accelerates in fast dynamic response. Above the nominal speed, the control applies field weakening by countering the armature reaction so that the motor uh, acceler uh, accelerates with nominal voltage and the constant power. Uh, in the case of the sensorless PM control mode, it's used two methods of estimating the rotor position. For example, uh, the method for low speeds uses the injection of approximately 1 kHz frequency signal. And the method for uh, high speeds, which is based on the output voltage and the current. Unlike the sensorized vector control uh, method for induction motors, the sensorized vector control for permanent magnet motors allows torque and speed control down to zero RPM. It also has a fast dynamic response. In this case, uh, in this case the vector control if encoder for permanent magnet motors also has the same advantage as sensorized vector, uh, vector control, but has even more precise speed control. 
And now we get to the last topic of our webinar. Uh, they choose the, the best method for your application. Uh, now, the, uh, now that you will know a little more about the characteristics of the control methods, how to choose the best method for my application? Uh, first of all, a few points must be taken in consideration, such as the type of load, uh, the type of the torque, whether it's constant or variable tor torque, the size of the torque, whether it has a, a high or low starting torque. In knowing this information, it becomes easier to choose the ideal method, a method for each type of application. OK, and then let's go. For the application does not require a high dynamic performance, also does not require high speed resolution and the fast torque response, uh, as in the case of PAMPs, uh, fans and conveyors, the ideal control method is scalar control. It has a speed resolution of 1% with a speed range of 1 to 20. Sorry. Um, you can also use for the case of multiple motors with one inverter only, but keep in mind that each motor must be protected individually. Also, with where the motor rated current is less than one turn of the inverter rated current. And now, when we talk about applications that have a large torque variation and they need a high torque start, as in the case of Hoyt's mills and centrifuge, in this case, the ideal method is the sensorless vector control. And the sensorless vector control has a regulation of 0.5% of the nominal speed, and it has a speed range of 1 to 100. Also, in vector control, you can use the drive in torque control mode instead for speed control mode. Uh, and it has a control range performance of 20 to 180 per percent uh, uh, with accuracy of 10% of the nominal torque and with minimum operation frequency of 3 Hz. Uh, in the cases of applications such as winding machines or rolling mills, which require more precision in their operation, the ideal method is vector control with encoder, uh, which has a regulation of 0.01% uh, in speed control when used with analog speed reference by 14 bit analog input or with the use of digital uh, references. Uh, or with a 0.05 percent regulation with a 12 bit analog input. Uh, if a speed range from 1 to 1000, um, and in this case, it's also possible to control torque, and this method is cap uh, capable of controlling torque and speed down to 0 pm. It has a torque control range of 10 to 108 percent. Uh, is an accuracy of 5% of rated torque. Uh, for applications with some speed regulation or that start with load or have load variation, the VVW control is the most advantageous. Uh, it has a regulation of 1% of rated speed uh, with a range of 1 to 30. And finally, the last example we got, the permanent magnet motor can be used for instance in people lift applications, where the precise control at low speeds, move torque, low vibration, and the low noise levels are fundamental. Uh, its control mode is a regulation similar to the vector control with encoder, from 0.01% in speed control when used with analog speed, reference by 14 by, uh, bit analog input, or with the use of digital reference, or else from 0.05% of rated speed with 12 bit analog input. This method, like the VVW, has a speed range of 1 to 30. Um, and just to remember that we saw a few applications and some of them can use different methods of control. However, we showed here the most usual uh, of each. And so this ends our webinar today. 
I hope you have enjoyed the webinar, that you have learned a little more about the existing control methods in the industry to ease the choice of the best method for applications uh, that are very common and so necessary in the industry uh, worldwide. Remembering that we now have some time for you to send your questions in case you have them, and you will be glad to answer them. Have a good week, everyone, and see you in the next webinar.